because we didn't know about the plea deal. This is Ronnie and Cindy Watts, the parents of Christopher Watts, the man who pleaded guilty to killing his pregnant wife, Shanann, and his two children, Bella and Celeste. We were not allowed to talk to him about it. They're frustrated because they say his attorneys wouldn't let them ask him anything about the case before the plea. I asked Chris, if you did not do this, do not confess to something you didn't do, and she, she shut me down. She completely shut me down. And just like everyone else, his parents have a lot of questions after he confessed to killing Shanann, claiming he saw her strangle one of the kids. He said, I'm sorry, I lost, I went into a rage and I killed her. And he said, I am so sorry. He says, I've ruined your life, I've ruined my life. Well, he told me, he said, Dad, I could not put the girls with her after what, after what she did. He said, I could not put them with her. And so instead of putting the girls with her, he decided to put them into that oil tank, which I still, oil tank. I, I still don't understand. I don't understand that, that either. Man. He's not a sociopath. He's not a psychopath. A question his parents have is what was the trigger to cause all this to happen? Something I asked when I interviewed him when she was reported missing. Did you guys get into an argument before she left? It wasn't, it wasn't like an argument. We had an emotional conversation, but I'll leave it at that. Because she was leaving him or he was leaving her? He was leaving mm -hmm. her. He just said he wasn't in love with her anymore, he said. Because both Shanann's family and Chris's family are in pain, his parents just want the truth about what happened. If this actually happened like the, uh, like they're saying that it did, that he killed them, then what was the trigger? If he didn't kill the children, I want him to say so. Then let them prove it. They're just pleading for the truth from their son. That's a whole lot of unanswered questions about the case, how everything, to me, everything happened too quick there. From, from a case status thing to a plea. If he's saying you didn't kill the kids, why why do this plea deal? I have no idea. <laughs> the, the only reason I can think of, he's trying to, for our family and her family, yeah. not to have to go through a trial, long drawn out trial. It has been so overwhelming, and I feel like I have to do something to to help my mm -hmm. son, to, to, I just, I need to do something. If he's not gonna fight, I want to fight for him. Have you been able to see him? At no, all? no. Well, what, 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 about prison? No, well, we got to see him one time. That was that Monday, right before the plea deal. That Monday, right night. before the plea deal, and that was it. These are the parents of Chris Watts, the man who pled guilty to killing his pregnant wife, Shanann, and two kids, Bella and Celeste. How did he kill her? How did he say he did it when he snapped? Well, uh, he said he did the same thing that she did to him, that she did to the girls. His parents went into details about the relationship problems Shanann and Chris allegedly had, but more importantly, spoke about the frustrations with his whole plea. Are you guys frustrated with, the, with his attorneys here? Are you guys frustrated with the direction they may have put him through? Yes, I am. I am absolutely frustrated. We contacted his public defender, but they declined to comment. Do uh, you think he was coerced at all? I don't know. I don't know. He... Uh, I have no idea what the public, to me, that all they wanted to do was just save his life, just save his life. Well, save his life and, and life in prison, to me, there's no difference. You know, it, it, he's, he's going to die in prison and, and, and there's no telling what can be, what, what will be done to him in prison. And I just want him to fight. I want this plea, I want him to not take this plea deal. I want him to, to plead not guilty to the children. After this interview, the Watts are looking into different legal avenues, even looking at another attorney in Denver to take their son's case. But there's been some reaction about all this from Shanann's family. Are you guys worried about some of the backlash about maybe coming out and speaking on behalf of Chris and what it might, what it might do to your guys' relationship and, you know, speaking out like this to, about a woman who, can't defend herself right mm -hmm. now. Well, Shanann, I mean, she was, you have to get to know her to be around her, but that way. Her family's attorney sent us this statement. Their false statements, however hurtful and inaccurate, will never alter the truth about Shanann and will never alter the truth about the crimes committed by their son. Her memory and reputation deserves to be protected and her family is fully prepared to do so. I just want to make sure he's doing the right thing. Yes. I mean, if he does it, if he didn't kill the children, I want him to say so. Then let them prove it. 
I spoke to a longtime friend of both Shanann and Chris who saw the interview. Out of respect of the families, he didn't want to do an on-camera interview, but said both families are hurting and just hope for the family's sake that Chris doesn't continue to fight this and go to trial. I didn't want him them just to save his life or to a life in prison. I wanted them to have a defense. You know, there was a defense there. Interview after the after sentencing. He never would say what he showed us because he didn't show us anything at all. Yeah, that is that is crazy. So Jean Powers, you mentioned her, the victim's advocate. Well, first yeah. of all, you guys weren't recognized as victims from the very beginning, were you? No, not till right before the Senate scene. We was at the hotel with her right before we went over. We both, me and Cindy both wrote out what we was going to say. We asked her what she was going to say. She said she was going to wing it. And we had no idea what she was going to say when she got up there. And we was just shocked as everybody else was what she said because we did not agree with anything she said. I remember that. Yeah. Calling Cindy yeah. and you guys right after saying, what, what are they, what's going on? And Cindy yeah. had no idea what I was talking about because she didn't even hear. She said you guys were so nervous. Yeah. Um, what were you feeling when you were in the courtroom that day? What was, what was going through your mind? How was that seeing Chris there? Like, what was that whole experience like for you? Well, that was only the second time we've seen him and from the time it happened till the sentencing. And it was hard, very hard for us. But, you know, we still love our son no matter what. And it's very hard to go through losing the grandchildren and everything. I mean, it's, it's been real hard on us the last two years. I mean, but uh, we was there for him because the whole world is against him right now. So I guess we're the only ones he's got left. Yeah. That's, I mean, obviously you guys have a very tight relationship with Chris, yeah. you know? Yeah. You guys talk to him every night, right? Yeah. When he gets a call, sometimes they've been on lockdown because of the COVID and stuff. Sometimes he gets a call, sometimes he don't. So. We talk to them whenever here. Right, that's all the witnesses that I had intended on calling. I know that the court addressed this during the procedural um, posture. I am aware that Mr. and Mrs. Watts would also like to address the court. I would certainly invite the court, if you want, at this point to um, call upon them, or we can certainly do it after um, any uh, evidence that the defense has as well. Sure. Does Cindy or Ronnie Watts wish to make a statement <clears throat> under the Victims' Rights Amendment? Good morning, Ms. Powers. Good morning, Your Honor. And I'm going to have you folks introduce yourself for the record. I'm Cindy Watts. Ron Watts, <clears throat> thank you. And I have authorized you to make a statement to the court as paternal grandparents uh, of the children. Uh, and if you choose not to make a statement, but your designee, Ms. Powers, chooses to, she can do so as well. How would you like to proceed can today? Can I read that? Um, yeah, do you want me to I'm start? I want you to start, but I would like to read Who's that. going to be speaking today? Your Honor, initially, um, they've asked me, and they're hoping that they have the strength to speak, but if they do not, they've written out their statements and asked me to finish for them. So That would be, that would be fine. Who would like to go first? If I could start, Your Honor. On behalf of the Watts, Your Honor, and to the community, we thank you for the opportunity and the recognition under the Victim Bill of Rights. We come today as the grandparents and the parent of the daughter and children whose life was taken in this case. We are not here to ask for leniency. We are not in any way condoning or tolerating the, the crime that has occurred and the pain that has been caused. We join in our daughter-in-law and grandchildren's family in saying this should never have happened. This is not condonable. This is something that we will never get over. We appreciate the consideration that everyone has paid, most especially the families that have lost everyone. We appreciate that they begged for Christopher's life. We agree and echo what they have said, that it is not his place to take anyone's life, nor would it be our place as a community to take his life. So we thank you for the opportunity and for every consideration and effort that's been put out. The prosecution in this case has in fact respected the Victim Bill of Rights. They took the time to 
explained that the information that my clients had at the time that they were interviewed was not correct. They were misinformed, they were searching for answers, they were not intending to cause any pain to anyone, and they appreciate that the prosecution answered their questions and gave them the time and the respect and the consideration so that they could tell this court and everyone in this community that the interview content was not their message, that they accept that their son has done this, that they accept that he chose to plead guilty, that he sought and requested their consent and agreement for a life sentence. They appreciate that he is given the opportunity to serve that life sentence. It is his responsibility, it is his sentence, and it is not enough to make up for what has done. We understand and we join the family in that we have questions. We don't know how such a thing could possibly happen or that a man that was responsible for raising his children and protecting his wife would take the steps that he did and that he would disregard their bodies and the love that he had for them and they had for him and everyone else and take the gestures and put this community through the investigation and the discovery and the responsibility of bringing justice. We do not understand that. We do not think it was appropriate. We cannot begin to think that an explanation will ever justify it. My clients indicate that they understand that a full opportunity for a confession with all of the responsibility and accountability has not occurred. And they support the family and the request that that happen, if not today, at an appropriate time, in an appropriate manner, so that everyone can have peace. To understand, to the best of their ability, the details that they need and to have their questions answered. And by giving this opportunity of a life sentence, we hope that he t embraces that moment. That had the death penalty been pursued, there would not have been an opportunity to be accountable and to give a full confession. And had the death penalty been sought, counsel would have fought for his life, the prosecutors would have been engaged in a multiple year battle, the families would have been torn apart, this community would have had to subsidize it and endure it, and we have so much respect and gratefulness that that did not happen. We would strongly encourage Christopher Watts to give that full confession in the tone and in the timing that he thinks is appropriate with the guidance of his counsel. We feel that it would be appropriate and helpful to ease the pain and the suffering. But we also say we don't think that there's anything that he can say that will ever account for his behavior. There's nothing that can be done to cure the harm he has caused. And he has the responsibility to serve his sentence with dignity and with regard for everyone and to spend every breath that he has left in an atonement for what he has done. Yes. So if I could just have you state your name for the record. Cindy Watts. Thank you. My name is Cindy Watts. I am the grandmother of two beautiful granddaughters, Bella Marie, Celeste Catherine Watts. I am also the mother of Christopher Watts, who I will be directing most of my statement to. First, I'd like to begin by recognizing the absolute horror of this crime and acknowledging the devastating loss that both the Rusek family as well as our family have faced. Our families have been irreparably broken by the needless deaths of Shanann, Bella, Cece, and Nico. This is something we will never get over. We will always mourn the loss of our family, and in that, we are united in our grief. I am still struggling to understand how and why this tragedy occurred. I may never be able to understand and accept it, but I pray for peace and healing for all of us. Now to my son Christopher, I have known you since the day you were born into this world. I have watched you grow from a quiet and sweet, curious child who Bella reminded me so much of to a young man who worked hard in sports and later mechanics to achieve your goals. You are a good friend, brother, father, and son. You have 
We have loved you from the beginning, and we still love you now. This might be hard for some to understand how I can sit here under these circumstances and tell you, although we are heartbroken, although we can't imagine what could have led us to this day, but we love you. Maybe you can't believe it either. As the Lord said in Jeremiah 3.31, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. And you, as your mother, Chris, I have always loved you, and I still do. I hate what has happened. Your father and sister and I are struggling to understand why. But we will remain faithful as your family, just as God remains faithful because of his unconditional love for all, for us all. We love you, and we forgive you, son. Judge, if I could read Mr. Watts' statement. Yes. My name is Ronnie Watts, and I am the grandfather of Bella, Celeste, Nico Watts, and I am the father of Shannon. I am the father of Christopher Watts as well. And one of the most important things I've done in my life is to raise my children and to watch as they started their own families. I spent many years coaching Little League, and talking to my son, taking him to the races, and sharing my love and knowledge of cars with him. He was just as involved with his girls. I believe he loves his girls. I know he does. This tragedy has impacted my family in so many ways. Beyond losing my precious grandchildren, our beloved daughter-in-law, we are forced to question everything. We still don't have all the answers, and I hope one day, Christopher, you can help us. Chris, I want to talk to you as a father and son. You are here today accepting responsibility, but I want to tell you this now. I love you. Nothing will ever change that, and I want you to find peace and today is your first step. The Bible says if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive us. Chris, I forgive you and your sister forgives you and we will never abandon you and we love you. Dad. Judge, thank you for the opportunity to address the court. Are there